Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Tiger Production. Today I bank off and being joined, like always, by Fluff. What's up, people? And today we are going over one of our duels from this past uh, kind of event we had. It was actually the last event of our of the year. So a yeah. lot of random decks. Uh, Fluff, you've never played this deck, but yet you decide to bring it. <laughs> Yeah, that, it was probably, no spoilers intended, but um, it was probably a mistake in hindsight. But before we get into this particular duel, uh, if you guys enjoy the content, hit that like, subscribe, the bell, you know, click some buttons. They're there for a reason. So if you enjoy the content, give them a press. But it is Vajex versus Surge Broly. Yep. So your first um, leader effect actually wasn't half bad. You got the Trunks, early take on life. You got the Vegeta, which could be potentially hurt three or less. Unfortunately, we do know how Surge Broly works. Yeah. Yep. There's not a lot of options for that. Yeah, it's, you know, one thing kind of throughout this, the mills during this game weren't half bad. Um, they weren't great. But they, you know, they weren't as good as they could have been. But they were nice enough that I think there was some gain on every burst. Yeah. And you know, I'm pretty familiar with Brawly Surge, so I know what's happening. I know what's coming down the pipe. I know what he's capable of. The thing that really throws me off, because I'm used to playing against Tanner with this is how fast he goes into this brawly. Yeah. Like, Tanner doesn't like to put the brawly out for the first few turns. Nick does it first thing, turn two. Well, I think a lot of it is... I, I don't think anything in Nick's deck gets hit by Black, Ma Black Mass Power. Yeah, or absolutely not. Or if it is, it's not a consequential part of his deck. What's the battle power for or the Angel God card? I can't remember what they're called. Uh, Lacor and something. Karen Lacor, they're twenty five, I believe. Yeah, so I mean, it's either twenty five, twenty or twenty five. Yeah. So yeah, nothing in his deck is hit by that. Um, he well, and they're all a rival. They're all keywords, right? So. Oh, it, true. It, it they are. Yeah. 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 So. So, it's just not an it's not an important factor in this matchup. So I was like, okay, he can have the Black Mass Sand. It's not really going to do anything. So you're getting your unison boosted up. Trying to trying to just formulate some pressure here. Um, he ends up, I, I believe, over the course of this, really just pushing me to a point where he doesn't want to awake me through life. So I believe the unison just gives him a target where he's trying to take me the long way around awakening. Um it keeps my unison from being as strong as it could be, and it prevents me from getting the full value out of that. So what I have to do is I have to just be as aggressive as possible. The problem is, is that knowing what this deck does, I feel really compelled to do what I can, and I feel the need to be defensive here. But I honestly, and it's not a misplay perhaps but it's just an incorrect line of thought and you'll you'll see that here i think he he attacks and i choose to not negate and i was like oh fuck this is green red like battle's dangerous yeah and there it is give me double strike he warps a card i can't remember yeah. specific battle power it, or uh, energy yeah it, it um i think it's four or less five or less four or less something like that but he just creates and then and then he comes in again with another so just boom boom lots of stuff and i should have just negated and closed him out of those windows yeah and not given him those and forced him to play the long way around see so i played um nick in the second round and i was playing prison and he, I would negate a certain amount, of, certain of his attacks, but sometimes, like I felt, it was okay letting him f swarm his board and would be in prison. I had solutions for that. With the Jex, there's not as many solutions. Yeah, I mean, really, that Gogeta is the five, so it gets over the Vegeta. 
the Brawly is a six, so it gets over that Vegeta. So unless I'm like going up into the EX Evolve or the or, or the Union Patara Pat, Pat, Patara Vegex stuff, I don't really have outs, and I do run max powers in this, I believe. Um, or maybe I cited them out. I can't remember, but I just know it never came up. Yeah. And a lot of it is like, so here I have the trunks. I should have taken this opportunity to go on ahead and fuse, but I didn't have the, the step up that would have warped a problem card up. Yeah. And the only problem with and this was actually, so I got a chance to play with this deck as well. I love the Jax. I really did beforehand. And we never got a chance to experiment with the uh, Yuen Patara versions, uh, those cards, from set 11. Right? It was set 11, right? Uh, actually, the Union Patara stuff came out in set 10. Oh, that's right. I was just... Yeah, I played... But we, we never added them to it. We ran a very aggro base that didn't really focus on the Union stuff, but I wanted to give the Union stuff a shot. It seemed fun, and I was like, yeah, I'll be able to, like synergistically include a Trunks and a Vegeta at any point. Yeah. I just did, um, like, three energy, I think, because for the five drop. I'm not sure what the other ones are on top of my head, if there were, if there the, were lower cost ones or not. They're both three. And then the EX Evolve, I think, seven, it's, it comes... It's free, I is, think. It's is free. On top of a uh, six, potentially. Maybe it's just any Vegex, but... Yeah. But still, three the, energy is really rough. It is incredibly rough, especially when you're playing against something like Brawly Surge, where you might want to be defensive. And and here, like, I push the human extinction attack to try to get a warp, to try to get a little bit of more a little bit more pressure on the field. Which I want to ask about that real quick. Um I can't remember top of my head. You do you choose any card in the drop and warp it? Um, I believe it is any battle card. Okay, that would make sense if it is any battle card because I was trying to figure out um, when going over this and getting set up. You didn't choose the field card, and I was wondering. I didn't look into it. I should have, but okay. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's any battle card. But the reason that I chose the ones that I did was because of the Brawly's ability to combo with cards in the drop area. Oh, so yeah. So he. If he needs a multicolor to combo with, and I can get those out of his drop area, he doesn't have as readily access a way to combo red green. And Trunks, I mean, sorry, the Goten one is pretty, is pretty good one because it can help him draw, even when he's awakened. Correct. Yeah. And so that was the thought there. And if I can resolve another one, I'll hit that Raditz. So here you're trying to go against his 30k. And he ends up using the gate and just popping both of those free play cards he's got on the board. Yeah, and that was, that was, you know, I had really pushed hard on trying to get rid of that Brawly because I knew, you know, we're on turn three now. I know there's a chance well, if the game goes long enough to get into, like, turn five, then I'm looking at a possible Raditz Secret Rare if he so chooses to play that. Yeah. Plus a combo killer Brawly on the field. And I just know that I'm going to be defenseless at that point. So here you're trying to figure out a few things. There is that one drop there um, that you could have potentially played and swung. I think it has is it uh, double strike if you have a unit. It yeah, it's so it's it's plus ten thousand double strike if you have a black unit. Um, and actually, those cards were really good. It was just really piss poor in this matchup gotcha and like like those cards are really good when there's a unison that you're trying to take down but like if it was on the field and i had dedicated the energy to playing that he just played Kira in the core it would be gone any yeah. battle card that i had on the field would just be gone at this point. and i'm still struggling with like trying to fend off the double strikes and everything from there so i'm having to I, I'm basically just grasping at straws and trying to hope that the bursts put me in a situation where I'm able to play a card out. Yeah. And and Jimmy, you know, kind of talked to me a little bit after, because we played in round two, and he was like, dude, he was like, I saw how you were playing that. He was like, really, when you played the Jacks, don't... He was like, your burst be like a secondary 
Like, you're not worried about what you're bursting. The bursting's just benefits. But actually worry about playing the stuff that's in your hand. And it really comes down to my inexperience playing this deck. This is probably the deck in the game that I am most uncomfortable with, Which is why I wanted to play it. Yeah. But and, that and I- also comes with the caveat of not performing as well. And we didn't say it's beginning of the duel, but this um we don't wait at all because we don't wait for whatever the date for the ban list is. We yeah. go ahead and just put it into effect at our locals. Um so you were your intent was to play four of those three drop trunks. Yeah, I actually had the deck built and it was I was running four of the trunks descendant elite or whatever it's called that tutors out the Vegeta that goes into Splinter. In mind, I was running that engine, and then the ban list hit the day before, and I text Jimmy, and I was like, hey, are we playing with ban list this weekend or not? And he says, well, yeah, we are. And I should have taken that as a sign to just not play this. Yeah. And I should have played something else, because I have a couple other things that I would really be interested in playing. But, you know, hindsight being what it is, I'm glad I got to play it. I got to learn a little bit. And real quick, the card's not banned. It's limited to one, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Correction, it's limited to one. Just to make but sure we said the, the way right thing. that, <laughs> But the way that the Jex functions, having a one-of in the deck is basically not having it. Yeah. Because unless you just are lucky enough to open it up, you're probably going to mill it pretty much every And I haven't played Black in a while. The two-drop Foo, um, is it... Actually, main from hand, or is it like the uh, four drop Majin Buu where it's, it could be triggered from drop? It's, it's triggered from drop, so it's two energy to add a seven or less black card from drop area for warp to hand. But the only card in my warp is the Vegeta, and I very early on, I believe, warped my over targets. Gotcha. So I don't have a way to set up my warp like i've got the trunks on the field i can probably make a union patara here i probably should have done union patara because he just after image ko the trunks and now i don't have a way to make the checks so he literally had the solution for every piece that oh. i tried to do like i don't think i had anything to play here i think i just had to pass and just for quick clarification the Foo, actually, you choose one black battle card in your drop area or warp and add it back to your oh, hand. And add it back. Okay, so it's drop area or warp. Yeah. yeah. Still, I mean, it's still pretty rough. <laughs> he, he's just yeah. killing everything you have on the board, not letting you be able to maximize the Union Patara and whatnot. And honestly, it is also probably a mistake for me to use the human extinction attacks offensively because he's got a combo killer on board. I should have just saved those for defending myself. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. Because he couldn't hit right. them then. Right. He couldn't combo kill those. It gives me a little bit of an edge. If I were to go back and redo this, I would play a little bit more reserved for those 1K 15 combo or 1K one, one cost 15K combos. As opposed to, I was trying to get rid of like the Kara and Lacor and try to slow him down a little. All right, so you went ahead and dropped the double strike on the board. <laughs> yeah, I have to apply some kind of pressure. Um, so I believe I swing at lead. He doesn't have to negate because he's got the KO ability, and I think he does do the KO. Like, you can see his hand. His hand I, is low. He's got, like, three cards in his hand. I think he combos, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he does combo. And a rival. And... I, I, kills it a, 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 a right a rival kill like he just he literally had the solution for every little thing that i tried to do and here he charges he's at five i either i think i run out of negates here and i and i just don't have any way to negate and i know that if he's got the brawly i'm in trouble yeah I mean, you're at five life, though. He swings. Um, did you power burst the first one? Uh, I power burst the first attack. 
All right. So you don't, you can't negate. He combos immediately arrivals. You and no and there's the Raditz. Yeah. Which is an automatic two damage, which puts me at three. He still has a standing Brawly. He still has a standing Bear Champa, Bear's Champa. He's still got the leader, which I believe he uses the leader's effect, which gives the leader double strike. Uh, well, he's still swinging um, Gogeta, which already has double strike. But I think it gives the leader double strike for the rest of the turn. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's, he's pushing the power in there. You combo, he just reminds you that it is two or less. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, two or less. So it does not, unfortunately, yeah. stay, but you do get the effects of it real quick. So that's what you're kind of yeah. going through the motions of. And, and my hand, my hand is a bunch of one, two costs. Yeah. With, like, I mean, every the super combos are two costs. And I, my hand, has, I have, like, two or three super combos. So I'm just going to lose every super combo I've got. I think I've got Dark Powers. I've got some of those Shushu or whatever they are. And I just know that, like, there's no way that I'm going to get through all of this damage. I have one energy open, and I pretty much have to burn the Champa to keep from taking a double strike. I don't, so looking back on this um, after editing it, I don't know if it would have made much of a difference. But I can't remember if you take this first hit, and I think it's best interest in taking this first hit. Yeah, I I probably should have taken this first hit. It would have probably made more sense to take this and hopefully pull negates or something out of... Okay, so you do take it. Okay. I couldn't remember if you did it in. All right, so now he swings with his 30k. I think he combos it up to 35. Yeah, there it is. And yeah, good thing about this deck is that a lot of the a lot of the free play stuff from drop are higher than two. Are higher than two, right? But I pretty much have to combo nearly every comboable card. Any combo kills one, so I have to commit another to not take the damage. Yeah. Um. But then I still have to get through Leader, Raditz, and Chompa's single strike damage to not lose here. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm just out of combo potential at this point, I believe. Well, so see, I have to fold it. You could have survived that attack. No, they're one drops, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, I, could, I couldn't. I uh, couldn't. Right, I had nothing to combo. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was kind of talking about, like, the turn that he, he after-imaged me. Like, Brawly Surge is still really good. And yes. Tanner has has legitimately felt like that deck was really good. And and I've tested this deck really extensively. And if this deck gets the opening hand right... Do some crazy stuff, yeah. <laughs> the, de the deck is vile. Like, especially, like, Nick's going to add in the Eradicator Piccolo Juniors, which are the two-drop alliance cards which jimmy runs in his hit pod deck which are so phenomenal in this deck it's not even funny it'll immediately do one damage and then after that if you let it go through it's a double strike yeah and it's a big damage double it's a yeah. big it's a big tall double strike for only two energy correct and I think it you, just needs that setup i think you draw two for it as well so i mean yeah yeah it's it's a huge advantage and like that's one of the the downsides to brawly surge is that once you awaken you just fizzle in resources. So having those Piccolo Juniors to add the draws is just going to make Nick's variant better. So I know, you know he used to play the Chi-Chi's. I think he took them out finally. Yes. I Yeah, the Chi-Chi's are good because they're good draws, but there are so many better options. Yeah. So hope you all enjoy. That was uh, today's duel between Vajex versus Broly Surge. Stay tuned tomorrow when Jake takes on Austin with... Uh, the new Ginyu deck versus Bernhan. Yep. Should right. be fun. Thank you for tuning in. And like always, Fluff. Hey, hey guys, read your cards, know your plays. See, when you don't know your plays, you're not going to have a very good time. And Fluff out. <laughs>